Hello, Scott's 569 students. This is Jen Michaels, your graduate student assistant for the class. And um, we know that many of you couldn't make it to Tuesday's class because of the weather, and we wanted to make sure that you stayed caught up with us. So yesterday we talked a lot about the program Audacity, and I wanted to give you kind of a crash course walkthrough of what we went through in class so that you can stay caught up. Um, this will also be a great resource for people who were here for the tutorial um, so that they can stay caught up or if they forget anything that I said. So first order of business, I wanted to show you here at our Carmen site, we do have some great um, Audacity resources. So if you miss anything that I say, or maybe you learn better from text, there's a really wonderful um, handout, the Eddie Rollin Audacity handout, that will go over a whole lot of what I'm going to talk about today and explains it in a lot of um, really explicit terms. The Audacity stuff starts on page three. So this handout is available through Carmen. There's also a link on Scott's content section to the Audacity manual. Um, Audacity is a free open source sound editor and it's been around for a number of years. So there's a whole manual for it. Um, pretty much anything you'll need for this class probably is covered in the manual. When we're in the DMP, so when we're in our usual classroom, Audacity is just on the machines already. This is my personal machine, but the logo looks just like this. It's a set of headphones with the little wave on it. Before we go into Audacity, though, um, the wonderful thing about Audacity is that it is cross-platform, meaning that it is available for Mac, PC, or for Linux. So I want to talk about how you can download it if you choose to put it on your home machine. So the, the link to get Audacity is audacity.sourceforge.net. So again, audacity.sourceforge.net. And you'll want to click from the main page on this download link. Now this business is very important. You'll get a big series of options about what type to download. For our, our class, we're going to use the 1.2 series. The 1.3 series is newer, but it's still in beta, which means that um, it's still being tested and tweaked, and it is somewhat prone to crashing. So we're going to use the 1.2 series. This is really critical because in our classroom, in the DMP, they have both versions. Okay, They have 1.2 and 1.3 you want to make sure you're always working with the 1.2 version, okay, so 1.2.5 in the case of our DMP lab. And at home, you also want to be using the 1.2 version. The reason is something built in 1.3 cannot be read by 1.2. So if you were to use 1.3 at home and then try to edit it in the classroom, it's not going to work. So stick with the 1.2. You can use Windows, Mac, or Linux and they are cross-compatible. So for example, if you have a Windows machine at home and you use the Windows 1.2.6, that file will be compatible with the Mac OS X 1.2.5. The other thing that you may need if you're downloading for home, okay, so not for the DMP um, classroom, but at home, is you may need something called the LAME encoder, L-A-M-E. We've put a link to this LAME encoder link in um, the resources tab of the Carmen content site. So if you are interested in using Audacity at home, I would recommend downloading the LAME encoder. It's really just a file that allows Audacity to export material in MP3 format. And that's critical because Scott is going to ask you to submit your work in MP3 format. Of course, your other option is to um, cook your file, right? to export your file as MP3. When you're in our digital media classroom, there's already the LAME encoder built into the DMP classrooms. So if you're only working in the classroom, this is not something you need to worry about. It's more something to worry about if you're hoping to put Audacity on your home machine. So now let's take a look at Audacity itself. I'm going to open it up by clicking here on Audacity. Hey Blake, go ahead. I'm just talking to my machine screencasting. So, now that we're in Audacity, let's talk a little bit about um, what the Audacity menu looks like. These buttons up here work exactly like any other stop, play, record, pause buttons you've ever seen in your life. Um, there's some zoom buttons over here on the right-hand side, and some of the critical tools we'll be using here are on the top left. I do hope that you notice that down here in the bottom left-hand side of the screen, whenever I hover over a button, it's going to tell me what that button actually does. So if you're ever not sure, you can just hover over the buttons It'll show you in the bottom left-hand side of the screen what these tools mean. So let's start by having some fun, and then I'll tell you about some of the particulars of Audacity. If you want to import an, aud an audio file to Audacity, you would go to Project and Import Audio. I'm going to import this Batman theme, because the Batman theme is awesome. And you'll see it appears as a track here on my Audacity framework. 
Notice this is a stereo track, and stereo track means that it's recording on two different bands. Um, in layman's terms, a stereo track is going to play in both ears of your headphones. A mono track, which is what you might get if you use a mono microphone or if you use um, a cell phone, some of those are mono, you're going to get a track that only plays in one headphone, right? It's only going to play like in your right ear. That's not a problem necessarily for our class, but you do want to try to avoid mixing mono and stereo. So if you build a project, plan to build it either all in stereo or all in mono, or else it's going to play kind of funny in your listener's ears. So as you can see, the Batman theme here is laid out in a series of waves. And the waves are actually an ideal size for working in Audacity. You might remember on the Eddie Raw recorder, Scott was entreating you not to record so that the, the waves would like hit the top. Well, that's the same in Audacity. If these waves were huge enough to hit the top of the screen, it would create crackling sort of reverb noise for the, for the listener. And if the waves were too tiny, like let's say if I record something here, you can see how pathetically tiny these little waves are there's a good chance your listener won't be able to hear it. So, you want waves that are kind of in the middle, and we'll talk in a minute about some tools you can use if you import a track and find that it's too loud or too soft. There are ways to adjust that. So, first, let's talk about how you would manipulate this track. You'll notice I've selected the selection tool in the left-hand side. In a lot of ways, the selection tool is like your cursor in a Microsoft Word or Word processing program. You can just highlight a portion of your track, and once it's highlighted, you can do all sorts of great things, like you can press the delete key on your keyboard, and boom, it's gone. You can select a portion of text and go to the edit menu, and you can cut and copy. I'll copy this piece. Maybe I move my cursor over here. I paste that piece of the track. So again, very similar to a word processor. Another thing that you can do is you can select a piece of the track, <clears throat> and you can choose the trim function. The trim function selects just down to that one piece of track that you've selected. <coughs> if you ever do something in Audacity that you're not happy with, you can, of course, click Edit Undo. And the undo remembers quite a few steps. So I can undo back to, essentially, my original track here. So that's the selection tool. Another really, really critical tool is this tool with two arrows on it. It's called the Move tool. It makes it so you can move a track. You can see right now I'm moving an entire track in time. But you can also use the selection tool to grab just a clip of the track. And you can potentially cut that into a new track and move just that. So let's go back to the selection tool and let's start to have some real fun. Let's Im import another track. I'm going to import audio and choose this file, Walking Home. You'll see it shows up as another <coughs> audio track below this track and I can move this one around as well. This way I can align the audio. Now, if I were to play both of these tracks right now, Audacity is going to play them together. It's going to sound like hell. Ready? Gross, right? So for editing purposes, if you want to hear just one track temporarily, you can use the mute button to mute out a track. You can also use the solo button to make it the only track that you hear. Now, keep in mind these two buttons are for editorial purposes only. They are not permanent. So when you export your Audacity file into a permanent MP3, Anything you do with mute and solo will not matter. So even if this track were muted, it will still play when you export. So this is just for editorial purposes. Some of the other cool things that you can do is, especially as you're um, working with footage of people talking, you're going to find that people do a lot of irritating things that you're going to want to cut out of the track. They say um a lot, they say like, they say phrases that you don't need. They make this kind of irritating sound It kind of sounds like a chipmunk. Um, you'll want to edit those out. And the easiest way to edit out that fine gradation is to use the zoom in tool in Audacity. There, you can use the view menu to do that. You can also use this button here. And you can zoom in almost ad nauseum. As you can see you can get down to a very fine gradation here. Just a few seconds. If I select just those few seconds, you guys can go ahead, talk all you need to. If I select just those few seconds here, I can play just those few seconds. In this case, I'm playing not even two tenths of a second. So you could delete just a very small portion of the track. It's very useful for when you're trying to do some very fine editing. Finally, before we let you go, we want to talk about some um, effects that you can enact on your tracks. You'll notice the effect menu right now is grayed out. The key reason for that is that I haven't selected anything in my track. So I'm going to select a portion of my track to which I'd like to apply my effect, and all of a sudden I'm given the option to work with that. So as you, some of the key effects you'll want to work with are Amplify. 
This will change the noise level of the track, upward or downward, and there's this very handy preview button to let you hear what it's going to sound like before you do that. Some other good effects are change tempo. That's different from change speed. Change speed will speed everything up. It'll make you sound like, um, let's say you speed up someone talking, they're going to sound like a chipmunk, like they're talking like this really, really, really fast. It's usually not what you're going for. Change tempo is usually what people mean when they say they want to change the speed. And again, you can use the preview to make sure that's what you're trying to do. Finally, there is a fade in and fade out. Very popular for the beginnings and ends of tracks. So that's something to look at as well. The only two caveats for Audacity that we really want to talk about beside that is that the pause button is very finicky. If you press the pause button, that can freeze everything. So make sure you're not paused. Another important aspect of Audacity is the Preferences menu. You'll see there's an audio in-out menu, and if you're recording directly in Audacity, you want to make sure that you're recording with the microphone that you want and on the channel that you want, either mono, that's one ear, or stereo, two ears. And that's your crash course in Audacity. I hope that was helpful to everybody. Um, good luck, and we'll be here in the classroom with you to answer any questions if you need us.